So the Department of Justice sends this letter to Devin Archer the night before he's supposed to testify in front of the House Oversight Committee. He's testifying about Biden corruption, Hunter Biden's scheme selling access to Joe Biden, even while he was vice president, to hostile foreign entities. Devin Archer confirms what we knew, that Joe Biden was in fact part of Hunter's scheme. Devin Archer testifies that over 20 times Joe Biden was put on speakerphone during Hunter Biden's business meetings with these shady people who wanted to pay Hunter for access to Joe Biden when Joe Biden was in Obama's White House. This is, to say that this is bombshell testimony would be the understatement of the year. I I feel like we're all desensitized to exactly how dangerous this is because we've known about Hunter Biden for two years. We've known, three years actually. We knew about this leading up to the 2020 election. We just weren't allowed to talk about it because the FBI told Facebook and Twitter that this was a Russian disinformation campaign, even though Facebook and Twitter and the FBI knew that everything on Hunter Biden's laptop, including the big guy email, was authentic, was real, that this actually happened, that the Bidens were engaging in this corruption. So the Department of Justice sends Devin Archer a letter telling him to set a prison date Devin Archer was sentenced last year to a year in prison for his role in a $60 million bond fraud scheme. The Department of Justice clarifies, let me bring this up because I want to read this to you. The Department of Justice must have just freaked out at people's backlash because they issued a statement saying, to be clear, the government does not request and has never requested that the defendant surrender before his congressional testimony. This is what's was shared with the New York Post um, and then shared on Twitter. And I saw that and I laughed and I was like, sure, sure. That's, 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 that's their, their little crisis PR scheme, right? This is how they're trying to correct the narrative because it was so obvious that the Biden administration was so fearful of Devin Archer's testimony to the House Oversight Committee that they tried to weaponize the federal government, our federal law enforcement agency, to put the guy in prison before he could testify, when they realized that that scheme wasn't going to work, then they were like, oh, please, do you question our integrity? We would never do this. Of course you would do this. You would do almost anything to hide Biden corruption. So here's the thing. If we're looking at Joe and Hunter Biden's corruption, I think it's it's inextricably tied together. Hunter Biden's corruption is Joe Biden's corruption. These are the things that we know. We know that Hunter Biden was hired by Burisma, an energy company in Ukraine, even though Hunter Biden knows nothing whatsoever about energy. We know he was paid an ungodly amount of money to do basically nothing. We know that Joe Biden then, serving his role in the family business, when he was vice president, uh, threatened Ukraine, a, a prosecutor in Ukraine who was investigating Burisma, threatened to withhold U.S. aid to the Ukraine if this prosecutor did not stop investigating the company Todd, who was paying his son. And lo and behold, of course, this prosecutor was in fact fired because Hunter Biden can get his dad on speakerphone any day of the week. And clearly he did. Clearly he did. Then of course, Hunter Biden engages in over a billion dollars worth of uh, deals with entities tied to the Chinese Communist Party. Every business of that size is tied to the Chinese Communist Party when they operate in China. We know that the Bidens were involved in a $5 million bribery scheme. We recently saw text text messages that support that. Hunter Biden saying, I'm sitting next to my dad. I'm sitting next to my dad. You deposit this money in our bank account or else. And lo and behold, within just a couple days, $5 million was in fact deposited in the Bidens' bank accounts. This is obviously influence peddling. Like what Hillary Clinton did with the Clinton Foundation, the pay to play scheme when she was Secretary of State, this is like that on steroids. Because Joe Biden was vice president. Hillary could never even dream of being vice president, let alone dream of being president. This is a thousand times worse than what Hillary Clinton did. And then of course, when they start to be found out, when this corruption is exposed, the Biden administration uses the FBI which uses big tech to uh, quash, well, first, I guess this was before the Biden administration, the deep staters in the intel communities used the FBI and big tech to quash the Hunter Biden laptop story to get Joe Biden elected. And now they're using the Department of Justice to shut down anybody who dares to expose the truth here. They've weaponized the Department of Justice. And a perfect example of this is a really shocking video that Project Veritas put out this week. As you remember, 
Project Veritas got their hands on Ashley Biden's diary a couple years ago. Ashley Biden is the son of Joe Biden and Jill Biden, and reportedly, allegedly, her diary contained some really serious family bombshells, and Project Veritas is still suffering the repercussions for, they didn't even end up publishing it, right? They did, they did verify that it was hers. They did not steal it. They're still suffering the legal, legal repercussions for a tipster giving them Ashley Biden's diary. Ashley Biden had rented a house somewhere, left the diary there. The person who owned the house realized it was Ashley Biden's diary and gave it to Project Veritas after reading it. Project Veritas ultimately decided not to publish it, return it to the police after verifying that it was Ashley's. And the FBI raided three journalists' homes, three Project Veritas journalists' homes, took their electronics, their phones, and their computers. They've been under investigation since then, for years. And now for the first time, Project Veritas is uh, releasing video of their phone conversations with Ashley Biden herself. We're gonna look at that in just a second, but Project Veritas released audio tapes of conversations in which Ashley Biden verified that the diary, which Project Veritas was given, was her diary. This is chilling. Take a listen to this. What you're about to hear has never been released to the public. This voicemail was left on the Project Veritas tip line on September 3rd, 2020, which led our journalists to investigate the matter of Ashley Biden's diary, thrusting us into a pivotal moment of history for all of press freedom. Hi there, I'm calling from Florida. My family, their friend who owns a house down here in Palm Beach was renting it out. I don't know how, but this is a while back. But anyway, somebody, a new renter moved in and Ashley Biden was staying in this room and they found her diary, all of her clothes, luggage, pills. Anyway, um, diary is pretty crazy. Um, I think it's worth taking a look at. It's not a joke real and um, I'd love to get into your hands. After years of public speculation and internal deliberation, we are finally releasing our conversation with Ashley Biden about her diary and other possessions. They were abandoned and later offered to Project Veritas. Hi, is this Ashley Biden? This is she. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, I just wanted, so I heard you have um, a few of my belongings. Um, and so I was going to ask if, it would, if you could please meet my friend, Eric, who is down in Del Rey, if you could meet him and get, and get this up to him. There's, there's a, a diary here. It starts in January. It says, January, at the end of a New York month, I'm sitting on a bed uh, at the I building. Yeah, so if you could just give everything that you have um, to Eric, that would be really um, um, great. I don't want to give this to to the wrong person. I mean, I want to make uh, sure. At this, is the, at this point, and I don't mean to. I, I don't want to have to get Secret Service involved in this, right? Because it just is. It's a whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I am Ashley Biden. It is my stuff. So if you could just give all of that over, I would really appreciate it. I know you sent a picture to my husband with a camera. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. and a few other things that are mine as well. So that would be really great. Where is a good place uh, for him to meet you? There's also this bag with luggage tags on it. Uh, for, and so is that bag, because there's, there's all this stuff, is that bag yours too, Ashley? Yes, it is. Shortly after the phone call, this October 16th letter was sent from Project Veritas to Joe Biden's presidential campaign, asking the candidate for comment. October 23rd. A follow-up email from our then chief legal officer. And on October 29th, 2020, Ashley Biden's attorney, Roberta Kaplan, finally responded saying, quote, this is insane. We should send to the SDNY. This is the FBI splash page showing the SDNY immediately open an investigation into Project Veritas on the very same day. And on November 8th, 2020, Project Veritas returns all Ashley Biden's abandoned items, including her diary, to Florida local law enforcement. Hi guys, it's Liz Wheeler. Don't forget to watch my show, The Liz Wheeler Show, every night at 7 p.m. on The First TV. You can download the free First TV app or you can visit thefirsttv.com slash Liz and start watching today.